Welcome back. You're still watching Namibia Connects. Now, today we're thrilled to sit down with Brian Stupak, an adventurous spirit currently walking from Cape Town, South Africa, to Cairo, Egypt, as he embarks on this remarkable journey. Now, Brian is now on day 48 of his journey and finds himself here in Windhoek, Namibia, having covered approximately 1,200 kilometers so far from Cape Town, South Africa. Now, not only is he traversing diverse landscapes, but he's also exploring the rich cultures and communities along the way with a special focus on mental health and personal growth. His track, or rather should I say a great track, highlights the transformative power of nature and adventure. He joins us here in studio to delve into this experience, the challenges, and of course, the way forward all the way up the African continent. Brian. Good to have you here in studio with us. How are you doing, man? I'm great. Nice meeting you. Um, quick adjustment. Yeah. So it started out as doing Cape Town to Cairo, but we're actually no, going, going to Tunisia. Tunisia. Yes, fantastic. Thank you for that clarity. Yeah, no worries. How are you doing? How are your legs feeling? How are your feet feeling, first oh, and foremost? They're a little destroyed. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm going to be here for yeah. about a week, so yeah. I'm going to take some time to rest and recover and uh, mm. meet some people, do some meet and greet. So Wonderful. I'm excited about that. But um, the mind's feeling good. The yeah. body's a little sore. But strong. Strong. Very much. Ready yeah. for the rest of the journey. I can imagine. Yeah. Brian, of course, you took on this challenge, yes. which is really a personal challenge for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's towards shedding light on mental health issues. Yes. Very noble effort. Talk to us about how you came to this point, how this journey came about you. So the walking was huge for me in the mental health aspect because I'm bipolar. So that's about four years ago I found out. Oh, I, yeah. I would go through these stretches in my life where... Mm -hmm. I had long periods of depression and I just couldn't control it. Yeah. And it was like, I don't drink, I don't smoke, okay. I don't do drugs. You gotta understand what triggers it. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. just, I, why am I depressed for like 11 months? Yeah. And so I would, I would go on these long walks and that would be how I'd bring myself up a little bit. Nice. And when I was manic, I'd bring myself down. It was sort of a mood stabilizer. Yeah. And, um, but the symptoms were getting worse because I wasn't treating it because mm -hmm. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know, you know, what it was. basically. Yeah. Is what so it was actually, I, I wrote a couple books, I got them published and, um, it was when I published my first novel, I was like, I'm supposed to be happy. Why am I not happy? Uh, yes. And so I went and I talked to a doctor and they're like, well, you're bipolar and you're in a depressive episode. Wow. So, and that was hard to hear because at media and TV, you know, you watch bipolar you something people, else. Yes. They're, they're homeless. They're yelling at cars on the side of the road. They have drug issues. You know, they have all these negative aspects that I was like, is that my future? So it took a little bit to come to grips with like, no, this is just a condition that's very treatable. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, it's like anything else. If you break a leg, yeah. if you keep walking on it, it's not going to heal. Yeah. But if yeah. you treat it, it'll heal. True. The brain is the same way. Yeah. And this is true if you're paranoid schizophrenic. It's true if you just have depression or if you're just going through a rough time. You know, you talk to specialists, you talk to therapists, you yeah. talk to people around you, open the community up. Yeah. So, I don't know, I kind of wanted to shed a light on my journey of walking and how walking helped me. Yeah. But I also wanted to use that as a platform to show people you can you can fix your problems yeah. by confronting them absolutely yeah. right i want to go back to you know your diagnosis a bit if, if you're okay yeah, with that you know um, to really shed light on you know issues of mental health uh, what was your life like um, and at what point did you decide like look i need a professional intervention mm -hmm. um, just talk to us about that aspect yeah so i because uh, we have a situation here in namibia where a lot of men shy away from seeking uh, expert help yeah. Uh, where we resort to our own solution, so to say, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would, I, after college, I traveled the world to learn as many languages as I could. So, and that kind of helped me because anytime I would move, yeah. I would get kind of a burst of adrenaline and I trick myself into a sort of a manic state to where I would stave off depression. Okay. Yeah. So I would live in Italy for like five, six months, learn Italian, and then I'd start feeling depressed because mm -hmm. I'd get old, and then I'd move to France. Mm -hmm. And then I'd start to feel depressed after a few months, and then I learned to lived in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So I did all this, and it really wasn't until COVID when I couldn't move, and I was like, I'm miserable. And then it's like uh, they're in uh, Native Americans, yeah. they'd have like these fish traps mm -hmm. where the fish could swim in, yes, but they yes. can't get out. Yes. Uh, that's how my depression worked. Mm. Whereas like if I entered into depression, I like couldn't it escape difficult it. to come out yet. Man. And so once I got in there, I was stuck there. Mm. And then it, like it was, uh, I, COVID uh, restrictions lifted. I moved to Cairo for a little bit, nice. um, but I still was depressed. I couldn't help it. And that's when I decided to, cause I actually started having some suicidal ideation. Mm. And so, um, 
I was like, this doesn't make any sense. I have a loving family. I have good yeah. friends. Like, I am, I'm having successes yeah. personally. Why am I so miserable? So I sought out uh, my family doctor, and then nice. he referred me to a psychologist. He told me I was bipolar. He's like, I can't diagnose you because I'm just a family physician, but yeah. you are here. Talk to this therapist, talk to the psychologist, yeah. psychiatrist. Yeah. So they diagnosed me, and they put me on medication, and it's been gradually uphill ever since. Fantastic stuff. I'm so happy that you're here and you know, sharing your story. It takes a lot, and we're really happy that you, know, you could share your story. Uh, in the manner that you're doing right now. And of course, you've taken on this great journey. I'm going to call it the great track okay. uh, of Brian. I don't know how, how what you've dubbed it, but I'm going to call it that for now. We haven't dubbed it anything <laughs> yet, so who knows? Maybe that'll stick. Very much. And I want to talk about how walking, it seems like such a simple thing. Oh, yeah. But it's so powerful. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I talked to some friends, um, ADHD friends, yeah. friends with other mental stuff. Yeah. And... They say, he says, like, my ADHD isn't a problem. Yeah. It's a problem in today's society. Mm -hmm. So, like, in, you know, in the olden days, we used to hunt, gather, do all those types of things. So, yes. like, it was nice to be vigilant and have yeah. a lot of, you know. So, as, as someone who, like, gets back to the roots, like, yeah. get out in nature, yes. walk, it's therapy. You True. know, like, we used to cover huge distances. Absolutely. And now we're sitting behind desks. And I think that's what causes a lot, besides that and the overcrowding of sure. the world, that's what causes a lot of... Uh, Many of these mental health challenges yeah. that you're seeing today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, we're not supposed to have the same the amount of long-term stressors that we do societally, like the debt or relationship True. stuff or, yeah. you know, um, finals in six weeks. Like yeah. these are, these are yeah. hard to deal with. Very much indeed. Brian, you've made your journey from Cape Town. You're here in Namibia now. Uh, 48 days on the road, yes. covered 1,200 kilometers. Yes. Talk to us about this journey. How has it been? Uh, it's been great, actually. It started off, I didn't really know what to expect. So I planned this for like three years. Mm -hmm. And I kept, because I promised my parents I wasn't going to do it in yeah. solo. Yes. Um, because they're like, it's dangerous. It's Africa. You'll get eaten by lions. <laughs> you know, which is what a lot of the Western world thinks. Yeah. <laughs> and I've lived in Eastern Africa. I knew that wasn't the case, but yes. I, I thought I could put their mind at ease. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. Three summers ago, partners backed out last minute, didn't do it. Two summers ago, partners backed out last oh, minute. Right. And then I was trying to find sponsorship. I was trying to find funding because yeah. I didn't have enough to do it. On your own, yes. Yeah, because I, I didn't want to just do it. I wanted to film. I wanted to tell a story. True. Um, I wanted people to see. Because I could just get a backpack and go by myself and share it with nobody, and I feel like it wouldn't have the same impact. True. Yeah. Um, but finally, this year, I saved up a little bit more. I, I did substitute teaching, and nice. I actually had a night job, um, 40 hours a week at Taco Bell. Wow. So I was working okay. 16 hours a day and My hating goodness. it but it was short term <laughs> yeah. and then i flew here and i was like i don't have enough money to finish i don't ha i'm going alone i don't know anybody i'm just going to start and see what happens and that was the plan and so in the beginning it was like you know i'm in south africa and i'm staying in places and i'm yeah. saying like Here's my journey. Yes. My name is Brian. I'm posting videos. Could I get maybe a reduced rate tonight? And they'd be like, okay, we'll take off five rand. Only five? Yeah. Like it was, <laughs> yeah. And then um, as the, the story kind of gained traction, it was like, okay, maybe you can stay with my friend. Yeah. And now people are messaging me trying to host me. Look at it's, that. Yeah. So wow. it's, it's, it's a, a situation where action creates opportunity. Yeah. Where I, I didn't have all the things that I needed to do it, but I just started. True. And I think that's symbolic of mental health, Absolutely. where it's like if you don't need to have all the answers right away, if you just start just and start. try your best. Absolutely. Yeah. What has been the highlight of the journey from Cape Town to Vindic, Namibia? There have been a few. I think the interactions with the people. Mm -hmm. I had a good one with Edenberry Farms. Yeah. They came out and walked with me the final 12 kilometers wow. um, to their yes. farm. They brought me a smoothie. Yeah. I love when people stop on the side of the road. Yeah. Um, while we're talking about things that are symbolic of like the mental health journey, mm -hmm. I look at, there was a stretch from uh, Nordover, Namibia. Yeah, yeah Nord, Nordover, yes. Nordover yeah. to uh, Ketmans. Yeah. And there's just nothing there. It was quite a stretch. It's yeah, 300 it's kilometers. A there's a hotel in Grunau, yeah. but not a whole lot in between. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, where the symbolism kicks in is the fact that, like, how it relates to mental health is if yeah. I do that by myself, yeah. I would die. It's desert, you know, I, I'd run out of water, oh, I, yes. you know, but I had people stop on the side of the road, give me and water, give me power, give uh, my cameraman Gebhardt some Cokes, nice. and we were able to make it. 
And I think that it tells a story for mental health too, where it's like, if I attack everything by myself always, I'm not going to make the progress I want. Actually, yes. But if I reach out and have community and have therapy and have the Some things that Some kind of support need, system. So, yeah, yeah. Then I, we're so strong as people. Like, we can do anything. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. So what essentially happens is you have Branch Tupac uh, walking on these massive roads in the middle of nowhere yes. with his cameraman only, Gebat, yeah. uh, filming this journey. Only the two of you guys. Just the two of us. And he's on a bicycle. So yeah. he, he rides behind. He has a little, a little easier. <laughs> yeah, although the last couple of days the bicycle yeah. broke down, so we had to send it up to Vinhook. So he joined me the last couple of days. And what's, what's funny is um, <laughs> yeah. uh, he kind of got to experience it. We like to do, uh, in a perfect world, I would do 30 kilometers a okay. day. Yes. We've been having to average between 40 and 50. And be that stretch I told you about earlier yes. to uh, Ketman's, we yeah. were doing uh, like 58. Yeah. And that's, you're walking from like 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. You know, you're going that's almost hectic. 24 hours. Yeah. And so when we get to these stretches, he would be like, let's do 65 kilometers today. Wow. And he would say these things. And I don't think he knew how far that was because yeah. he's on a bike. And then he I'm walked. I'm looking at him giggle right now. <laughs> yeah. he, he walked the last two days with me and we averaged 32. Wow. And he's like, man, my feet, my knees. I was like, that's half of what you were suggesting. I imagine. I'm sure he missed that bike very much that yeah. time. Man. We'd go, um, yeah. we'd have like 120 kilometers, which is, uh, and he'd be like, let's do it in two days. Yeah. It's like, man, that's four days minimum. You know, fantastic. You're here in Windhoek now, of course, and maybe it's capital. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to be here for plus minus a week. Yeah, I uh, think we'll stay till the 9th uh, in Monday, okay. uh, yeah. September. Fantastic. I have a, a meet and greet actually at uh, the Smoky Mayor yeah. Saturday, 1 p.m. to 7. So I'm hoping nice. to meet some people because a lot of people messaged me yeah. and wanted to say hi. And, and I want to talk to you about that, that particular aspect, you know, engaging yes. with various communities, engaging with people. Yes. And how high up your agenda that is. You know, yes, it's about the journey. It's about you know, really traversing across the African continent. But as you rightfully mentioned, of course, highlighting the mental health issues yeah. uh, faced across, you know, the globe. Yes. Uh, and really engaging with people, also learning about cultures and you know diversity so that's number one actually that's more yeah. important than the walk yeah. so if i have to stay a day an extra day or two here or there because we have to meet with this person or have this yeah. conversation then that takes precedent yeah. so there was um there was uh i don't know if you paid attention there was a guy who ran africa a little bit ago i remember yes I remember, uh, um, yeah hardest yeah. geezer or whatever so he um, our stories are similar in the, the crossing Africa, but our, how we tell our story is a little different. His was about, I think, the, the destination where it's like, I'm going to finish this run. Mm -hmm. Mine is more about telling the story of... It's more about the journey and not the destination. Yeah, yeah. like my goal isn't Tunisia. My goal yes. is today. True, true. You know, so like how can I be the best possible version of myself and help the people around me today? Uh, how can I connect? And I think a lot of people can relate to my story because you know, everyone's going through something. Absolutely. And we all fight Absolutely. a thousand invisible battles every day that only we know about. 100%, 100%. All right, you're here in Namibia, of course, you're heading to Tunisia. Yes. And I'm sure our viewers are wondering right now, how are you gonna get there? What route are you taking, etc. Let's talk about the rest of the journey. Okay, so we're gonna stay west. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of it, uh, we're, we're going pretty much straight north through okay. Namibia to yeah. the border. Yeah. Um, we were going to go west of the Atosha, but we scrapped that. We're going to mm -hmm. stay east. We're going to go uh, Okahanja, yes. Ojirongu. Yes. Ojirongu, I'm, yes. I'm, ru I'm, ru I'm ruining these names. <laughs> Don't worry, Otavi, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Um, And then we're going to go through Angola. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, DRC. Yeah. And then Nigeria. Then we're going to curve along like Benin and Togo, Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. like western. Yes. Uh, Western Sahara, then we're eventually going to come up mm -hmm. Morocco, Algeria, and then into Tunisia. Tunisia, fantastic. Yeah. Just for those, those viewers who are wondering uh, why not Cairo, uh, Egypt, because you you know the saying from Cape to Cairo. Yeah, uh, that was the plan, and yeah. that was the plan a few years ago when I came. So in my head, it was like, I'm going to do Cape Town to Cairo. That was like the plan uh, for years. Yeah. But there's a war in Sudan, mm -hmm. and I didn't, first of all, I'm not going to walk through a war zone. Yeah. Um, I, please don't. Yeah, no. Please don't. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think they're letting people in. So that was. Yeah. So I know some people are. We met a few cyclists along the way, and they're doing the Cape to Cairo. And what they're doing is they're getting to Kenya, mm -hmm. or and they're flying over Ethiopia ah, okay. and uh, Sudan. And I didn't want to. That felt like cheating. Like, yeah, I, 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 I didn't it, it want to. It takes fly. away from the experience. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to walk the continent. Yeah. I wanted to finish. And um, and then also when I was in Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, they. The two things they don't really love in Egypt are people filming them yep. and 
large meeting places. True. Yeah. And so, like, I wanted, I didn't want to finish in a place where I couldn't film and gather a lot of people. Yeah. So, and then I'm hitting a lot more countries this way. So I felt like I could spread my message a lot better. Absolutely. I, I speak Portuguese. I speak French. So yeah. I'll be able to communicate nice. with people along the way. Nice. And... Yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like this trip was a better, we switched it. If you watch my videos, the first like 15 or 20 videos, yeah. I was like Go on my trip to Cairo. And so that's probably where you got this uh, yeah. intro from. Yeah. But we switched it about a month in. Mm -hmm. And now Tunisia is the, the destination, goal. the goal. Yes. What, uh, do you have any fears about this journey? And what would you say are those fears? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest one is just letting people down, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't really have fears in terms of like safety the or, yeah, safety yeah, or conflicts or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. We'll figure that out. I'm yeah. gen I've traveled a lot in my life. I'm yeah. generally pretty uh, resourceful and smart when it comes to that. Obviously, yeah. there's things I can't control, but I'll put myself in the best positions. Absolutely. I have people that are helping me along the way. Yeah. But, um, you know, as I still have my ups and downs, yeah. right? And so my fears are like trying to stay disciplined and even on my down days, which I still have, yeah. uh, being short with someone on social media or in person. If I just don't feel like talking to them, like I don't yeah. want to be rude yeah. or I don't want to be, I don't want to ruin someone's day ever, True. you know? True. So I, I, want, I need to stay disciplined and always be up for people because a lot of them are coming a long way or talking or it's important for them to talk to me because they look up to the journey. Absolutely. And so, um, and then I, I don't want to let anyone down, right? So it's like, if I only make it to the DRC and it's like, okay guys, I'm tired, I'm going home. Then I feel like everyone would be a little disappointed. <laughs> Very much. Just talking about the social media interactions, what yeah. are people saying? And yeah, what, what has been the impact so far, you know, off this journey? I feel like it's been huge, you know? Um, at least personally, I mean, I'm not like Beyonce or anything, you know, so I don't, not like that. We have huge. millions of followers no, no, yet. No, 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 we have like, we have a few, we have like yeah. 8,000 and you know, nothing crazy. But you you're making it sound like a small number, but yeah, that's a, that's a significant number. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, so we do our walk every day, mm -hmm. um, Gebhard films, and I don't message or text anyone through the day okay. because he has my, he has my phone, okay. so he's yeah. filming me. Great. Yeah. And then at the end of the night, after he edits, I post and... I just respond to all the comments. That's like the thing. And it's getting harder because they're getting more, you know? Mm -hmm. So we used to get like, uh, you know, a few 20, 30 comments per post. Now I'm getting hundreds. So it's, yeah. and people are like, come see me in this town, come see me in this town. Yeah. Or like, how do you do with this mental health thing? And so I'm trying nice. to respond to each and every one because I appreciate them so much. Yeah. Um, but it can, it, it can be overwhelming. I, I'm sure sometimes. Well, it, yeah. I think it will be eventually. Yeah. But I really look forward to it because I like meeting the people. I like. Yes. Just yesterday, I met a fan when we played basketball oh, on nice. the hair, and it was. He's texting me. He wants pointers. You know, so it's <laughs> yeah. like I like meeting different people and talking to them on their terms. And it goes back to you know your early experiences in life. You mentioned that you, of course uh, you lived in Europe. You know, you're in Italy. Yes. You spent some time in Tanzania. Yes. You're in Cairo, Egypt as well. How has all of those past, you know, experiences, the languages that you've learned, etc., how do they make it easier for you to navigate, to converse with people, etc., be it on social media or in person? Okay, so I, that's an interesting question. Um, as far as anything you do makes you better at that thing you do, you know, so if you're a professional pizza eater, the more pizza you eat, the better you get. Yeah. If you are someone that's in a lot of relationships, you practice breaking up a lot, you know? So it's, there's a lot of, I, I've practiced starting over more than anyone I've ever met, whether it's careers, and a lot of that's a bipolar thing, whether it's travel. Anytime I move to a new country, you're starting over. You know nobody, um, you, you have no connections, you just have to make friends with strangers. And I think that has helped me the most of like, okay, I'm new here, I'm Brian. How do you do it? I think many of us fear a new journey. A new path. I mean, you can go to a country, learn the language, and become bored of that country afterwards, where many of us would not even take that first step in the, in, in the first place, so to say. Where does it come from, you know, the bravery to traverse the world? Even right now, you know, here you are on this journey across the African continent, yeah. where many of us are even scared to leave Windhoek alone, you know. <laughs> I think failure is huge for development. Yeah. So... Um, like failure, like well, so many people are petrified of failure. Yeah. Like they're afraid of failing in their job. They're afraid of failing in life. They're afraid, Absolutely. but with failure comes a fresh start. And I've, I've just failed more times than anyone I've met. Because anytime you start something new, like I started a business yeah. out of college, bankrupted that, you know, I start, I tried to make it as a yeah. professional basketball player. Yeah. Spoiler alert, I'm not, <laughs> um, you know, there was a lot of different treks yeah. along the way and a lot of different projects I've tried. Mm. 
And as someone who hasn't gotten what they've wanted yeah. a lot of times, you realize sometimes the thing you want isn't the thing you need. Mm. And so That's powerful. when I get to a spot and I don't succeed in what I'm doing, it's usually something else arises and it oftentimes is better. I love that, you know, learning and owning yeah. our failures, so to say. Just a quick last question before we let you go, Brian. Uh, what are some of your favorite tracks, some of the favorite snacks perhaps that you uh, listen or eat uh, on the journey? You know? Okay, so I've been, I, n I normally have eaten pretty healthy in my life, um, and that's kind of gone away on this walk yeah. because there's not a lot of <laughs> options in a lot of places. Yeah. But no, there's some things I really enjoy. I really like Blue Powerade. Yeah. Um, that's usually quenches my thirst. I mean, Before I like water, obviously. Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Gebhard, my filmmaker, loves yeah. Coke. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. I I love dark chocolate. <laughs> Those are like, if you stop by and bring me like Doritos or dark yeah. chocolate on the side of the road. You've made your day. <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny though is um, everyone love here. Everyone here in South Africa loves Biltong. I've, I have like three kilos of Biltong in my bag of people just like dropping off Biltong. And here's a secret. Namibian Biltong is better than that of South Africa. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I called it beef jerky in one video and I got just crucified on, on the social media chats. People were like, yeah. it's not, it's not beef it's jerky. jerky yeah. Yeah, it's it's like, Biltong, please. Yeah. Oh, sorry guys. Brian, great pleasure meeting you. Yes. Uh, really brave what you're doing, you know, not only for yourself, but for so many people out there who are having mental health issues. I think, you know, walking is powerful in itself. Yeah. Um, the power of the physical, you know, to, to really add to the mental, you can't you can overemphasize that. I want to wish you all the best for the rest of your journey. Be safe out there. Uh, take it easy and please take it easy on Geba too. Okay. I know he's not going to do 60 or 65 Ks a day. <laughs> Maybe just stick to the 30. Thank you so much and all the best to you, Ian. Thank you so much. There you have it. Brian Stupak, of course, he's traversing across the African continent from Cape Town to Tunisia in an effort to place the spotlight on mental health challenges. Of course, he's been on the road for 48 days now covering 1,200 kilometers from Cape Town up until Vintuk. And as you heard from him, he will be here in Vintuk for a while, of course, engaging with the people here and just learning a bit about Namibians as well and see how he can impact their lives. He will be continuing through Angola, through the DRC, of course, just traversing on the western side of the African continent all the way up until Tunisia. We wish him all the best, him and his cameraman, Gabbard, all the best with this great journey. And certainly it will have a lot of impact on a lot of people. Check them out on social media, follow them, and of course, follow their journey. We